Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Justice for All. Previously, we uh, had a brief scene where we controlled Maya, which I still can't figure out the context of, and then we started up court, and well, we learned that Francisca von Karma got shot, thanks to the killer, and while she was recovering in the hospital, Edgeworth is taking up the reins. And boy, is he making this difficult. We're having to fight tooth and nail for even a foothold, and we haven't even found one yet. And indeed, we lost pretty spectacularly last time, so let's begin again. I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown? He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What do the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well... Phoenix? The judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here... That gavel of yours will be ringing out the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to this court? Well... Previously, when I ended the last video, I was dead certain that I should have said, no, not right now, but when I was replaying the catch back up to this point, something caught my eye. Um... Photo of this crime scene, yeah. It just occurred to me how ridiculous it is that the wine glass full of tomato juice is on that desk, completely untouched. Clearly a big scuffle happened. All those bottles of perfume and lotion and the vase all came crashing to the floor. And yet the glass of tomato juice is untouched. What is that? That said, in this situation we find ourselves in right now, I don't think that bringing up how weird it is is something we can make a foothold out of. No, this is more like a cincher to nail down a point we established first. So, let's say no, not right now, and hope that the judge calls in a new witness. This has to be another trap. But if I don't say anything, then risk throwing out a bad piece of evidence. <laughs> Wasn't that my first instinct? And then I, th I overthought it again. Wow. <laughs> Looks like the defense isn't saying the peep on this one. Which means this court is adjourned. Phoenix, we will lose this case if you give up here. So you have better show the judge something quick. Slow down. We all know I have a tendency to be wrong more than... I can't even say... <laughs> It's funny because his last name sounds like the word right. There's one. Uh oh. Okay. 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 Oh god. Okay. We've been here before. Oh my god, it is the wine glass! What the hell? Come on, dude! I just can't win! <laughs> uh, I'm mad. <laughs> At myself. <laughs> okay. This, this is a wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken, his makeup is all over the floor. These were all things that were at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Isn't this a point I just talked about? God damn it! Ugh. I 
I barked up the right tree and then decided to stop. Hmm. Well, yes, I see your point. However, this glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over along with everything else is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Well, what do you all have to say? Uh, well, yes, it is a little peculiar. Yes, isn't it? I thought it was. You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Mr. Edgeworth? What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion. You don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? Oh, God. It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Wasn't the table behind the body? That'd be a weird place to set it down. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. Mr. Wright. Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? No sign has been drank. Yeah. If Adrian had the glass with her when she discovered the body entered the room, then she would have drunken out of it beforehand, at some point. No, the signs point to this glass being poured after the murder. There is no way. If I appear weak here, the trial is over. I can look for my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point with certainty. They just might fall for it if you're thought-provoking enough. Oh boy. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on the table. Whoa! Hey, now! The defense actually asking the prosecution to back up their claim with evidence for once? Hey! Hmm. You've turned the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. What? You're not thinking hard enough today, Wright. <laughs> Too true. Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Th then... Of course it has been thoroughly inspected. For fingerprints. Fingerprints? There were only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? They were not the victims, nor the defendants. Rather, they were one of one Adrian Andrews. Oh. Well then. What? Oh boy. There's Andrews' fingerprints. Okay, so that line is all written. It hasn't been drinking from. Okay. Um... That is why I said that the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Ugh, I can't believe I fell into another trap. Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corrida. 
But upon seeing this dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm. What you just said makes a lot of sense. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Now do you see, right? I can't change any part of my scenario as it explains everything all too well. Ugh. I thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I have come to discover. W wait a second, Mr. Edgeworth. I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution has yet another witness we would like the court to hear from. So, is Edrith's answer to squash out any doubt whatsoever? To look at all possible angles? Hmm. And avenues of thought? Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Mr. Edgeworth thinking? Hmm. Old bag. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Ah! G O T C H A. Ugh. I wonder what happened to that calm composure he had earlier. Oh, edgy boy. It's been, what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet? It was the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand. I tell you, this time I know what I'm supposed to do. So today, I'm going to tell you anything and everything. Even things that don't have to do with that terrible crime. Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all this court needs to know. rat a tat 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 Oof! Shush! I'm talking to my dear Edgy Wedgie right now. Don't interrupt us, Gramps! Yes, madam. No, 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 please. By all means, interrupt her. Please. Ahem. Anyway, witness your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that youth are hot-headed nowadays. Not that I mind at all, Edgy. Now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Oldbeg? It was a great job being able to see my dear Yuan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean, you were a fan of the victim? Uh, <laughs> just snorted! <laughs> I'm trying to make a, no a nasally voice for her. And I guess making a nasally motion with your nostrils while doing an intake of breath results in a snort. Lesson awesome learned. <laughs> oh god, how embarrassing. Um, Look, everyone is crazy over that on guard, saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man. Juan Corda. Um, those two were the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well. Please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Oh boy. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. <laughs> edgy Poo. What you witnessed. Bring it on. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. 
Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was on guard. Matt on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. We've been over this. Did you see Matt on guard or the Nickel Samurai? Hmm, so Mr. On Guard came out from the victim's room. See, it has to be him. He's a murderer. Ha, <laughs> ha. has his doubts. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay. Bring it on, I say. Bring it on. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. Miss Oldbag, what was your post on that night? Uh, what was your post on that night? The lobby. I was supposed to help set up the stage for that trifling show. But I refused to help, I'll have you know. It was for that lead ha lead headed samurai show. Heh. I even took out a few of the nails. It was a good thing the show didn't go on. Besides, that manager with the glasses seemed to be working hard at it without me. So I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. And that's when you went to hang around the victim's door. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Something you were interested in? And just what was that? Oh, the truth about the... what you may call it, the scandal. It's not some little thing I can just go around telling everyone you know. It's top secret between me and Juan. Ah, an edgy poo, of course. Mr. Edgeworth, what is this thing she was interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? But should it prove relevant, you can always have it appended to her testimony later. Looks like we shouldn't force it right now. Yeah, we have a tabloid about from Gossip Land, so yeah. Hmm. And what did the witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's door the entire time? No, and did the witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's door? Yes, yes. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. Oh? Then would you tell us the number of people who went in and out of Mr. Corda's room? I have no idea. I wasn't born so I could count things for those who didn't pay attention in class. That's why ever since I turned 20, I quit keeping track of how old I really am. Uh, yes, well... That would explain your, why your age was not included in the report. How old is she? Hold on. Age unknown. Oh boy. Uh, in any case, the witness then saw someone, correct? That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. Who in the world was that? I'm not allowed to say. That sort of information has to be carefully guarded from the masses, Sonny. The man that came out of Juan's room, it was... He was... Yes, he was. Aw, oh, I'm too scared. I can't say his name out loud. Oh, what I wouldn't give to have Francisca's whip right about now. Well, I guess I can tell you, since he was such a bad boy anyway. It was on guard. Matt on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. You saw my client. Are you sure about that? Yes, see. Really? Annoying brat. When I say I saw someone, I saw that person. Why do I get a sense of deja vu? Yeah, there we go. Maybe to avoid a repeat of last year, I should delve into this a bit further. Yeah, the person's clothes. 
Please tell the court about the man's clothes in more detail. What a troublesome man you are! Really, as if something like that matters! But it does. Um, now well, what was it? Oh yes, it was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing he's always wearing, that racing jacket. Oh. Ah, he was wearing that at the detention center, too. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. Hmm, men. Um, right. So, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Um... It was not important. We should ask what it was carrying. Loop over. Let's ask you another thing. You saw Matt on guard, but what was he carrying? Maybe I should ask about the face. I mean, anyone could wear that jacket. Please tell the court about the man's face in more detail. You don't need me to tell you about his face. That soft, gentle look in his eyes and his effeminate lips. His right eye covered by his silky hair, his sparkling, shining teeth. Are you sure you don't have any feelings for him? His teeth were shining? Well, he's shining all around in this week's pinup poster, dearie. This week's pinup? Why do you... I mean, I don't care how he looks in this week's issue. Please stay with what you saw that night. Nah. It was not important. Wait a second, wait a second. Wasn't Matt on guard arrested while he was wearing this costume? Hold up, hold up. Found in on guard's hakama. Yeah, he was wearing it, right? Ongar was arrested in his costume. Yeah, he would have stayed in his costume after the show to make that announcement. Okay. Well, for now, let's ask if he was holding anything and see what, what we can find there first. What was the man you saw carrying? In which hand, is right or left? Um... Ah, uh, now this is a real miss. I mean, I can't be expected to answer such a vague question. Indeed. Please be more specific with your question, Mr. Wright. Uh, s sorry was the man you saw carrying in his right hand? Ah, uh, he wasn't carrying anything in that hand. Then how about his left? Empty. Huh. Okay. 
It was not important. Yeah, okay, let's go with the clothes. Let's go with the clothes this time. I think I have a good idea here. Always good to do a bit of deliberation. Oh, dang it, I looped. Person's clothes, yeah. If Matt did the murder while he was in his normal wear, how was the button found in the Hakama? It was very important. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Then, then perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important. Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request that the witness said about the jacket could be appended to her testimony. Mm -hmm. I don't quite see where you're going with this, but all right. Witness, please. Ah, well, I don't like to badmouth anyone without reason, but if I must... Wearing his flashy racing jacket was honestly it was all just for show. Let's press this just in case. Are you sure the defendant was wearing a racing jacket? What do you think? It's not like I've seen him any in anything other than that horrible thing. I'm sure he was wearing it. She's so sure of herself that it's to the point of self-absorption. Alright, alright. Wearing this flashy racing jacket, I submit evidence that he was, in fact, not. Yeah. Bingo! Got it. Miss Oldbag. What? Don't say my name for no reason! Do you know what this is? Ah! It's button number two on the Chairman Ninja's costume! Now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it in a single glance. Not only that, but the number of it. <laughs> give it here! Give it here! If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this! And tap, tap, tap. Wow, she really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. This button was discovered on Mr. Ongar's body during a full body search. See? See? This button proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it was that rascal on guard. It was caught up in the pleats of his nickel samurai Hakama pants. See? See? An on guard is a nickel samurai. Witness? Now, it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination, but just now, didn't you say that the defendant... Matt Ongard was wearing his usual racing jacket? Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear! Weren't you just doing that? If I wore this- oh. Uh... Oh boy. <laughs> she does it for the children. Now hold your tongue still there for a second. So what you saw in actuality was not Mr. Ongard the man, but Mr. Ongard the nickel samurai. But when you think about it, they're really one and the same anyway. Miss Olbeg, this is a very important point we're talking about. Angie Poo, do you think so too? Well, it might be something worth considering. 
just say it's important and agree with me for a change. <laughs> Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. Uh, Alright, if you insist. I should be the one sighing, not you. Who I saw? Okay, another round. On guard! On guard! Yes, now I remember! The Nickel Samurai, that's right, it was the Nickel Samurai that I saw! Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. So he must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. I... I knew it. I knew you'd say he was inside that costume. What? Did you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Yes. Don't be a bad little boy thinking about such rude things. But... but the possibility does exist. Ah, Yannins today, I told you. There's no way it was anyone else. Uh, how do you know that? Because I said so, and what I say is the truth. Oh, please. She's just as delightful a witness as she was a year ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Oh, boy. Who I saw. On guard, on guard. Yes, now I remember. Would you please get on with your testimony? Humph! Watch your language, young man! What sort of tone is that to take with an elder? I thought you said you didn't count your age. My youthful... You're calling yourself young! <laughs> She's a walking contradiction! Uh... Oh wait. My youthfulness isn't what it used to be. I should finish reading that. Oh, please, God, no. Uh, what? Oh, God, I am not going to sing with Old Egg's voice. She's actually singing. Someone help my poor ears. Mr. Edgeworth, can you please do something about this rocket? Witness, I'll give you a piece of gum later if you'll be a good and stick to just the facts. Okay. You promise, right? Right. I'll be sending the bill for the chewing gum to your office at a later date. <laughs> Remind me to send you a thank you note later, too, Edgeworth, old chum. I think my cat wants to be fed. You can wait. You can wait. Daddy's recording the video. Um, the Nickel Samurai, that's right, it was the Nickel Samurai that I saw. Be a little more careful with your testimony, please. Not too long ago, you said he was wearing his racing jacket, and now he's not. Not too long ago? Then let me ask you this. When you were itty bitty, what was your grand dream? Huh? What did you want to be when you grew up, whippersnapper? My dream, huh? Well, I... Uh... Wanted to be Judge Wagner, hero of the public's court. So what? Is that a reference to a real person? <laughs> uh... Well... What I said earlier? Who puts any weight into things like that? Miss, you're in a court of law. Uh... Okay, moving on. And why would that be? That way, no one could see his face, of course. Well, there's still no advantage from for him that I can see. In fact, you would think your costume would make him stand out all the more. 
You are such an annoying child, you know that? You just disagree with everything I say. Isn't that what you're always doing to me? I got it. Maybe it is more troublesome for him to change in and out of his costume. He had to go to that post ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. Was there anyone else scheduled to appear at the post-ceremony post show? Well, all the contestants were supposed to go on stage in a friendly gesture thing. And that included the Jamma Ninja. Of course it included him. That's why when On Guard came out of Dear Wan's room, I didn't give it a second thought. Hmm, I see. Well, anyway. So he must have worn that nickel samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Wan. So, let me ask you one last time. The person you saw, it really was the nickel samurai. As showy as ever. Haven't I been saying that from the very beginning? Can I throw in the towel yet? Hmm. You don't need to think too hard on this one. Huh? There's a contradiction in your testimony that was sitting in plain sight. Yeah. Yeah. He couldn't have worn the nickel samurai during the samurai costume during the murder because the costume has two gloves. The question is what that contradiction means for us. Yeah. Okay. He must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume and he was stabbing poor Juan. But... The costume has two gloves. Do I do this? I think I want to. No! Come on! How am I supposed to point out the gloves? Is it the knife again? Okay, maybe I'll point out that the knife has fingerprints on it. There we go. Damn it. Please take a look at this. Yeah, so it's a knife. Big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No, no, that's not my intention at all. That's a knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to this case? You don't even have to ask. It's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Ah, Edgeworth caught on. Is that what you're driving at? That is exactly what I am driving at. What are we driving at? And whose car are we driving? I knew he would say that, I just knew. If Mr. Ongard was really in the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder, then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, he would have wiped all previous fingerprints on this knife right off. Oh, that's right. The Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? He probably took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. Why? And why would he do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? There is no way he would do something like that. However, there is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility. It's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in costume as a Nickel Samurai. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk to the victim about the stage show. Which is why he took his gloves off. Hmm. But the murder still did take place. It's well known that there was bad blood between the defendant and the victim. Hmm, yes, I have heard that before. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? Let me get this straight. 
Hydra's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intention of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with this theory? Yeah, yeah, I see there are no problems. I can't see any real problems with this theory. But if you let Edro's theory stand, then the one very large step closer to the guilty verdict. Yeah, okay. Wait, so I'm trying to prove that there was an intention to kill? to the victim's room, he had no intention of killing him. How can I disprove that? Well, I clearly have to say there's a contradiction, so let's see where that takes me. This theory contradicts something in an earlier testimony. What are you babbling about? Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. Ongard was the killer. If that's the case, I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. What? He was planning to confess it? Was he planning to confess to the murder? That's it. Or maybe he wanted to murder him over, over having a relationship with Adrian, but then again we know that um, Matt kind of pushed her into that, so... Report? I don't think so. Um, let's try this. Oh. an object that shouldn't be at the crime scene. The knife! God damn it. <sighs> this knife. This was used by Mr. On Guard at dinner. Yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Corda. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he? Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from supposition one. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be glove marks left on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprints shouldn't be on over shouldn't be all over it like bees on a hive. And that brings me to my final point. 
This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. Order. Order, I say. Order in the court. Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? It can't be to hide the murder method. The choking of us with the scarf wouldn't lead anywhere. And it would be so obvious. It would be to frame Matt on guard, surely. It's to frame my client, Mr. Ongard, of course. To frame? Uh, aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? Objection! But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume, and if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Arg! Witness! Looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Edgy Poo? Arg. Witness, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. On Guard with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? But I mean, I didn't really do anything about that now. Oh, I can't really do anything about that now. Look... I was just waiting around in front of their doors because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. Oh. She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai. Alright then. Who were you waiting around for then? Hmm. That's top secret to anyone outside of security. I have a feeling that you were waiting for Mr. Juan Corda. Am I correct, witness? Ha ha ha. The way you think, you are a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. Amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? So Olbeg was waiting around in front of the victim's room. It doesn't sound like she was waiting for, to catch a glimpse of Mr. Corda. Maybe... Phoenix. Maybe the old bag... The old bag was waiting around for that person. Hmm, that's what I think me is hinting at. It's still impossible. Miss Oldbag. You were waiting for, the, for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? Adrian Andrews. The person who was apparently in a relationship with Juan. Yes. Take that! Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Ongard's manager. But why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest rumor in circulation, Your Honor. Hmm. Oh, this is... Well, this is... Hmm, ah, I see. The judge seems to be really into the article, if it can be called such a thing. Then this manager with initials AA, are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews. Without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. Hemp, looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away this whole sworn to conf confidentiality stuff then. W witness what in the world are you? Watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. I got some information. Some very secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. Yeah, she stole Lot of Heart's camera. Saw the photo that was in there. And, uh, the rest was history. But what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? 
I really don't want to do this, however I cannot simply let this point slide. I see. Very well then. Witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready. This is going to take the wind out of your youngins. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Really, it's not like we are ten years old. <laughs> Alright, secret information, huh? That on guard is one evil, evil man! He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal! So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with Juan. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret, you got that? Nobody else but you and me knows yet, okay? Lada does. The defendant sent his manager? What a distasteful topic for this court. What? Nobody's above gossip. And isn't there a saying, the truth is never pleasant. Never heard that one before. Mr. Edgeworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter and found that the truth the article proposes is, in fact, baseless gossip. Hmm. But should this be true? And this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful. The old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right! On guard is nothing but your average foul-blooded youth! Well, as old saying goes, you've got to burn old bags with fire. I've never heard that before. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. Who wrote that? Why would you write that? It doesn't even fit. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I think we'll leave it here for now. So, as always, Old Bag's motivation seems to be wholly driven by her perceived sense of justice of who deserves to be a star and to carry on with their lives. Uh, she was tacti tactfully withholding information to make sure that Matt Ongard would go down, but now we have to smash up the rumor she's acting on. <laughs> I gotta say, this is a really tough case. I think... Uh, this is just the first day of court. I mean... I know that the D-Killer situation demands that we only have one day here, but still, this is really, really tough for the first day of court for Phoenix Wright standards, you know? Um, gosh, how much more lies in front of me, and I only have one little bit of health left? How brutal. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get by with copious amounts of saves coming, so... Uh... I feel like we're no closer to finding the truth behind all this. So it does seem right now that Matt on guard was framed. Well, that still makes it kind of weird that a D killer would uh, want to blackmail Phoenix into getting a one-day acquittal. know that on guard was framed? I have no idea. You know what, we don't know a single goddamn thing about D-Killer, so what the hell? Let's stop thinking about him. My head hurts. I'm hungry. I'm tired. Let's end this. <laughs> well, this has been Phoenix Wright Justice for All. I've been Zephyr the Jester. 
I thank you for watching, and hopefully I will catch you next time when we continue this court session. So, yeah, take care.